The king is crazy. It might be parked in your garage. Your name might be on the title, but I'm the owner because I'm the king of Miatas. Hey, today we're going to talk about Mazda Miata transmission disasters. First, we're going to start out with the five-speed and a common problem of a five-speed manual transmission being stuck in reverse. And when I mean stuck in reverse, what I actually mean is that you're pulling out of your parking lot or your parking space or the Circle K, you had it in reverse, you go to put it in first, and when you put it in first and you let out the clutch, the car dies. And then when you have the clutch out, the car's in reverse. You put it in any gear and the engine dies because it's actually in two gears at once. Now the transmission is stuck in reverse. What has happened is actually the shift rail, the reverse shift rail, did not come back to its detent. The shift rail is detented and actually held into place by the reverse light switch. The reverse light switch is located on the transmission. It's actually on the driver's side. Here's the five-speed transmission right here. And here's the reverse switch. This is the old style reverse switch. You can see it. It's kind of got a, like a white putty, white putty, kind of a elastic on it, and red wires. So if you have this switch, in your Miata, you need to replace the switch. The new updated switch is actually has a black plastic cap and green wires. So you want to see this switch in your transmission. Now when the transmission is actually stuck in reverse, many people have taken their cars, and this is the, the, the disaster part. It's stuck in reverse and they take their car, their Heather Miata towed to the transmission shop, and then $1,500 later, they have a rebuilt transmission. Well, the repair is simple. First thing you're going to do is actually, the car can be moved if you push in the clutch. So it takes two people, one person to push in on the clutch and another to push the car around. Or you can drive the car in reverse. Once you have it to a place where you can work with it, you have to get under the vehicle and remove the old reverse switch. Here's the reverse switch. So it actually 15 16 wrench, takes it out, that's the size of it, takes it out. And once you remove the switch, so you can see in the hole, that's where the D10 is. The switch actually, the plunger, holds the reverse in D10 right there. There's another switch on the tail shaft of the transmission also, and it's up here on the main shift shaft. This is the shift shaft. Shift turret. Shift turret, shift shaft, and this is the neutral switch. The neutral switch is important for idle quality, it affects emissions. This is another important switch. We have to take the reverse switch out. The reverse switch is actually does the reverse lights. If you have a reverse light problem, this switch could also be the problem. Now, to show you the detent and what you're going to do, I'm going to actually remove the tail shaft here so we can see inside the transmission so you can see the detent and what you have to do to repair it. And here's that detent. Here's where that switch is actually going to ride. Right here. Right here. So when it's in reverse, this detent is forward. Like so. But what happens is it's stuck here. The shifter is actually stuck, so it's actually in reverse, and the shifter is up in here, and we can't shift back down, because it's actually slipped past it. So to fix it, what we're going to do, I'll show you, I'll put the tail shaft back on. Once you remove the switch, here, now if you look at the detent, you can see the detent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a shorty Phillips screwdriver. You're going to reach under the transmission, shorty Phillips, and you're going to get in there and Click that detent back into place. Now you're back in neutral. Now you can take the new switch. It's got a copper washer on it. Put the new switch in. And you're ready to go. So when I talk about a disaster, you can see that new switch, a little bit of labor, a little bit of knowledge, and you're back on the road again. And this is the Miata transmission, five-speed 
stuck in reverse, the quick repair. Now we've had some track cars come in and they'll be stuck maybe in third or fourth or second gear. And the other shift rails are right in here, the detents are on these bolts right here. So sometimes we can actually coax those transmissions out of being stuck in second or third gear by pulling all these detents and then working the transmission back and forth. Next we're going to look at the disaster with the automatic transmission. The automatic transmission disaster is actually uh, it is, uh, mistaken for a bad engine. What happens is your engine starts an automatic Mazda Miata and the engine starts smoking like the dickens when you take off from a stop sign or when you're coming to a stop, there's a big puff of smoke. And everybody thinks it must be the engine. But the reality of it is on the automatic Mazda automatic transmission, it has a, a, a diaphragm modulator. And the modulator is a small device that's actually on the left side of the transmission. It's located right here. And this, this device, this is it. This device uses, and it has a piston in it, a little rod, and this device uses the engine manifold vacuum to assist to tell the transmission when to downshift. So this transmission is kind of an old-fashioned transmission by using a modulator. Uh, modulators were used on all automatic transmissions and they may have had one or two or three of them back in the old days. But now this is a carryover from an older transmission style. The new electronic transmissions do all the shifting by the computer. So there really hasn't been a problem, and there's not much knowledge about the modulator. The modulator has a diaphragm in it. When the diaphragm goes bad, you actually start sucking automatic transmission fluid. And it comes through this vacuum line all the way to the intake manifold. And after we get done talking here, we'll show you where that port is on the intake manifold. So to test and see if it's the modulator, you're just going to disconnect that vacuum line and then drive the car and see if the smoke stops. Like I say, this, trans this transmission problem, the automatic transmission problem, has created a disaster because people overhaul their engines or replace their engine, and when they're done with that, they still have smoke in the engine from the modulator. There's two different modulators. There's a large can. The large can is for the 1600 cc engine, and the small can is for the 1800cc engine. Next we'll take a look at the under the hood of a car and see where that port is on the intake manifold. Most of the standard shift cars have a rubber plug on it, a blind plug. Now I'm going to show you where that port is, the hose to disconnect, to double check if you have a smoking automatic Mazda Miata, to disconnect this line, plug the port so you don't have a big vacuum leak, and then drive the car again for a couple miles, see if the smoke goes away. And if you watch my pointer, here's where that vacuum port right is. Right down in here. Right there. You can see it right there. And it has a rubber cap on it. Right there. And here's the rubber cap. Here's a new cap. That's what the rubber cap looks like. And we sell the caps, you know, if you need a new rubber cap at our, on our eBay store also. Also, we sell the modulators and anything you might need. The reverse switches. Hey, thanks for watching this video, and I hope that prevented some transmission disasters with your Mazda Miata. And visit our eBay store, Miata Mecca, for any of your parts needs. And thank you a lot, and we'll see you the next time around.